Well, here we are once again, and we thank God. We thank God for His presence. I'm glad for everyone that's here, but you don't come close to the presence of God. What I mean is God is above all and far above all of us together. I'm glad for everyone that's here, but we need God so that it was worth us being here. I am so, so pleased to see what God is doing, and I so much agree with what the sister just testified. Brethren, we've got to get beyond all this fluffy stuff around us, this mamby pamby uh, thing, and get real and stop playing church and be what we need to be. After all, I guess in the last 18, 19, 20 months, uh, people are starting to realize it could cost them. It could cost them something. So it's the, the price for playing church has gone up. And people, if people aren't real, they say we better don't play. Maybe we should go virtual. God help us that we would be what we need to be. Appreciate those that are watching live. God bless you in a very special way. Thank you for your support, your prayers. This morning, I'll, I'll do something that I don't know I've ever done before. And that is, I'll give you half my title. I'll give you half my title. And then in a little bit into the message, I'll give you the other part. Is that fair? All right. So half the title this morning is Christ's birth. Christ's birth. And do we have that verse there, Matthew 1, 21? If there is such a thing as, is there, if there was such a thing as... The clear, outstanding verse in the Bible. Brethren, we could look at this verse and just sit here and meditate on it for an hour. Just look at it. What it says, powerful, powerful, powerful words. Powerful words. Should we read it together? Stand and read it together? If you can't stand up, it's understandable. Those that can't stand up. Let's read it together. Slow. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. You may be seated. Powerful, powerful verse of Scripture. Powerful verse of Scripture. And... I must say that to the largest degree or the majority of people do not realize what it says and the majority of the people do not believe it. And the majority of the people do absolutely not live it. And this verse tells us what his birth was all about. Brethren, they couldn't even call, they couldn't even pick a name for the baby. Now, if you, how many of you had a baby in the last year? How many of you raise your hand? How many of you had a baby in the last year? Let's say two years. So there's some. You had a little baby. And I will speak for you. The naming of the baby was very important to you, wasn't it? It was very important to you, what we call the baby. This baby was so important, it was not left up to the parents what to call that baby. Because the purpose was set why he was coming. And in case anybody missed it, this was not some little cute this and cute that. And I'm sure he was cute. But what I'm saying is there was a purpose for this birth. There was a purpose. And it goes beyond Jesus in the manger. It goes beyond doing something, saying something. It goes beyond December 25th. This means, look what it says. You say, Pastor, it's not underlined in my Bible like that. I know I did it. Those are my notes. You're looking at my Bible because it is so of utmost importance. She shall bring forth a son. And the first thing is said is, I'll let you know what to call him. You will call his name Jesus, is there a reason why? I want to ask this whole world, is there a reason why you call him Jesus? 
because it wasn't a common name. It wasn't a known name. Why did we call that baby? Why was he told before he was born, sister? Why, was, why were they told what to call him? And why Jesus? You have the answer. It is right there. Now, well, I'll leave that part out. Okay, so um, behind Jesus, what do you see there between Jesus and the word for? What do you see between Jesus and the word for? Literally, what do you see? Okay, between Jesus and, and by the way, Jesus is capital letters. My name and your name aren't. We don't come close to him. And sister, I so much appreciated what you said in your testimony just now. Whatever good any of us has done, it's not for us. It's not for us. My name is not capital letters. Uh, the best I can come up with the first letter, now we go to small letters. Right? And the same for you. So his name is Jesus. And brother, we could preach the whole morning and evening on the very name Jesus. Some people have gotten saved from their sin by saying one word, Jesus. And I don't mean just saying it with the lips, but when people say it from their heart, Jesus. That means I am lost. I am undone. But Jesus. And look what it is behind the colon. For he shall. Not maybe. Not possibly. But he shall. Save. His people. From their sins. This baby Jesus. Now, no wonder, no wonder, Simeon. You remember Simeon? When Jesus was eight days old and they brought him to the temple. I'm kind of jumping ahead a little bit. But so when he was eight days old and they brought him into the temple. And some folks, just like today, some folks would look at it. Oh, now the list, you look at his hair. Look at his eyes. Look at it. I mean, that's how women do it. And I, there's nothing wrong with that. To me, a lot of them look alike. I can't tell them the, the difference. But those sisters come over and they, I mean, look at him. Look at his nose. Look at Simeon saw something else. Simeon says, sometimes old men have some real wisdom. And that's the way it used to be more and more. Old women and old, older people, you could count on them for wisdom. Anymore in our day, they don't want to look old. They want to put all the uh, uh, three-quarter inch layer of, 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 of things on, maybe not that much, a little less. They want to put all that on. They want to look like 16. If you are 60, I wish you would act like it. And I wish you would not mind being 60. And I wish you would not mind because we need some wisdom. I want to meet Simeon when I get to heaven. Simeon walked into that temple. And I don't think they wore glasses in those days. They probably didn't have them. But there was something with this man he could see. And Simeon walked into that temple. And he saw Mary with that baby in her arms. And he walked over there. And you moms, I know how it is. You don't give it just to anybody, right? That's Careful place, especially when they're eight days old. Simeon walked over there. I say as respectful as he could have done it. I don't know. It doesn't say what age he was. I think it tells us of Anna how old she was, but it doesn't tell us of Simeon. But he was an old man. But folks, let me tell you something. Simeon walked in there, and he walked up to him. Can I hold that baby? And it's actually not a very common thing, just real common <laughs> After tonight, this morning's service, don't do it because I said it. But older, older men usually don't walk and say, can I hold that baby? They hardly trust themselves because I might drop it and the thing is fragile. I'm just saying, let her hold it because it's, I don't know how to do it. Right? But Simeon walked over there. I'm going somewhere with this. Simeon walks over there and he takes the baby in his arms. Oh, let me tell you something. 
This untoward generation, this unbelieving generation says, show me a sign. Show me if Pastor Hildebrand can raise somebody from the dead, I'll believe that he's of God. I'm sorry, shame on you. Because Simeon was not like that. Simeon had spiritual eyes and Simeon looked at it. He said, can I hold that baby? Can I hold that baby? He took the baby in his arms and he held him and he says, okay, I'm ready to die now. I have seen, I have seen, I, I've seen, I've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And you know, there's a lot of parallels there that we could draw this morning, but people have been waiting. There's people in this room that are elderly and they have been waiting for this time. They, just like the sister testified, they've been waiting. I guess I'm confined to this platform, am I not? Okay. So I'll try to stay here. So they've been waiting and waiting. We want to see a revival. We want to see an awakening. I thank God for the elderly people this morning that have been praying and waiting. Not all Simeons are dead. Not all Simeons are dead. And there is Simeons right now that have a vision and they see what is going on and they say, hmm, hmm. I see something. I see something. It's definitely not Corona. I see something in this. I see something is going on. This is what I've been praying for. This is what I've been waiting for. It is on the horizon. And Simeon took the baby and said, I'm, I, I don't need to see anything else. But Simeon, what if he won't do this? What if he won't? It made no difference to Simeon. Simeon said, I'm convinced. I'm convinced. I've seen. And well, what's the Bible say? I wish I had that verse. Just comes, came to my mind. Blessed is he that doesn't despise the little things or something like that. We're, we're blessed if we don't despise the little things. Do you know what? Simeon looked at that tiny. I don't know how, how much he weighed. I don't know how much. But you know what? I'll tell you this. And I'll say it as careful as I know how. Don't worry too much about his hair color. Don't worry about too much his weight and his length. But let's be concerned. Will this be a man of God? Will this be a woman of God? Because we need them so desperately. And then whether that blanket fits exactly right or that blanket is the right length or that blanket came from grandma and grandpa, whatever. Let's be more concerned. What is in this child? Anyway, we'll go get back to this. So you see here it says Jesus. For he shall save his people. That's a promise. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Let me just for a moment speak to those of you in this room that don't know Jesus. First of all, we're glad you're here. We're just really glad you're here. How else? The Bible says faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by the preacher. God has ordained it that way. I realize we have a one-way conversation going on here right now. God ordained it, not me. So you're supposed to hear that. But let me tell you by the very sound of the name, Jesus. Jesus. And you know when Jesus walked on this earth, you saw the amazing thing. Remember the thief on the cross? He hung beside Jesus. And the thief on the cross was one step away from eternity. One step away from being eternally lost. Folks, that's tremendous. One step away from being eternally lost. And the change of attitude in a moment. The change of... I, I, I think it would be safe for me to say this morning. I don't think I would do any abuse to the scripture. The thief on the cross just said, Jesus. In other words, I recognize you. What did he say? He said, remember me. Remember me. And you know what? Oh, glory to God for that miraculous transformation in that moment of time. All that took. Oh, you say, so that's, oh, so I thought, I thought, I thought it takes more. Oh, it takes a wholehearted from the bottom of your heart recognizing I'm lost I've done wrong and then he looks and he shall save his people from their sins your life doesn't the sister testified I don't really know you sister I don't know where you're from but you know what it doesn't really matter it doesn't really matter when when God saves you you're never the same so people look at us. Why don't you all stand up on this side and you on this side? 
you may, you may, be, you may be seated. I'm talking about these younger folks. You all stand up. If you don't stand up, it means you're old. I'm older. <laughs> I said older, not old. Older. Okay. So, you think we always were like this? Some of us were liars. Some of us were cheaters. Some of us were thieves. Some of us were troublemakers. Some more than others. Some a lot. Some a little less. That's what this was. But look what God has done for us. You may be seated. Now let me, let me give you an example. And then we want to go to another scripture. Let me give you an example. If someone is drowning in the lake. Somebody's at Lake Erie and they're in there, they're drowning. And somebody comes and saves them from drowning. That means they're no longer drowning. If a drunkard comes in here and says, Pastor, for 30 years I've been an alcoholic and I'm constantly bound. I'm, this is a vicious, what do you call that, vice? Is that what it is? This is a terrible thing for 30 years. I want to tell you something. Can I just preach, folks? Okay. So if I tell the drunkard, look, Jesus can save you, but tomorrow you will keep on being a drunkard. That is not gospel. That is not good news. The good news is if we can offer the drunkard, you can be saved from your sins. You can be pulled out of that life. If not, then we better close our Bibles and go home and let some fishermen get up here and preach who will tell it like it is. He will save his people from their sins. That was the whole point. We couldn't save ourselves. Humanity was lost. It's, it says people sat in darkness, didn't know where to go, just like our time. Just like our time. Folks, this world perhaps has never seen darkness as it is right now. And that's why if we are just simply living a Christian life, we'll be a beaming light in this world. Without opening our mouth, we will be a beaming light. Because we're not in darkness. He has delivered us, delivered us from that. And when that person gets pulled out of the water... Oh, they're so glad he didn't drown, right? They're so glad. And news goes out. He was saved. He was saved. And if the next day they say, yeah, yeah, he's still drowning, you would say, that's a lie. That rescue was fake. And that's exactly what it is. When Jesus saves you, he makes you a new creature. The old thing is gone. Oh, he makes all things new. And you actually, you know, our, our dear sister Valentina, she was born in Italy. Would you mind standing up just a little bit? She's over. How old are you, sister? How old are you? Or, you, or is that private? Okay, you don't have to say it. I'll say it. I'll say it. She's past 80. 83 are going to be 84 soon. All right. Okay. So... I so badly, I so badly want to learn Italian. I so badly want to speak with an accent like she does. Jeez, their faces shine and they shine in their faces. I love it when she describes how God changed her and how God forgave her. She was a devout Catholic. She didn't know what else to do but to bow down to these idols. And God saved her from that. And made her a brand new creature. And when she first came, I, don't, I forgot that year, that's many years ago. When she first came, and I know where it happened, where it all happened, on 59 Forest Street in Elmer, I believe it was. 29? October 30th. 30 years, God changed her life. And she said when she testified afterwards, she said, I couldn't deny that these were the people of God because she said their faces are shining. 
when you pray with someone and God lifts off, does just this, and God lifts off their load of sin. Ah, uh, you know, sister, the old timers would call that praying through. They would be at an, at an altar of prayer and, oh, they would weep and pray. Oh, so you're talking about that torture. No, I'm talking about getting rid of the load of, rid of, the load of sin. Yeah. And they would be praying and praying, my load of sin. Remember Pilgrim's Progress? That big load of sin. And all of a sudden, that load of sin is gone. Oh, I could fly. I could fly. Oh, they say, I feel like, I feel like, I feel like I weigh hardly anything. Oh, that load of sin is gone. That's what we need in this time. That's what we need in this time. Not some mamby pamby wishy washy experience, but we need strong, strong experience of salvation where God has changed it from night to day. Well, if you do that, you won't keep many people. Well, let me tell you something more important than keeping people is preaching salvation. And by the way, by the way, that prophecy is the wrong prophecy anyway, because if ever there was a time in the last decades, it is right now where people want to know what is actually going on. Oh, what a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful life that is. I think we should just take the time. How many Bibles are here? Raise up your Bibles. How many Bibles are here? Excellent. That's, that's a lot of swords in our midst. Yes, I just said it. For you folks watching, for you lawyers following me as I preach, I just said it. We have a lot of swords in here. A lot of swords in here. And to make matters worse, there are two edged swords. So let's turn into our Bible, to, in our Bibles, to the beautiful, 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 beautiful scripture of Luke chapter 2. Luke chapter 2, verse 1. For those that did not bring their Bibles, we will show it here as well with the projector so that you can follow along. Let's read Luke chapter 2, verse 1. Oh, I hate this world. For twisting and their propaganda and their, uh, what's another word for twisting? Help me out with some words. Some have for their, Contortioning. what's it called? Contortion. Contortion. What's another word? T twisting. Distorted. Distorted. Deceptive. Deceptive. Well, I got to stop because we're going to go on all the time. Okay. I hate this world for twisting everything and, and dominating and, what's another word, manipulating everything and doing this and all of that for money. But anyway, so I hate them for it. We're going to be just as simple Sunday morning people here this morning that want to take Luke chapter 2 in its original form. And we just want to see what does it say. So let's leave, see Luke chapter 2 verse 1 says... And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree. Serious? They had that problem those days? <laughs> amazing. Amazing. And then look what they did. Went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. Well, I'd like to help you out. It's not exactly talking about taxing like we would know taxing. Okay, because that we don't even want to hear, right? So this is a little different. This is talking about, let me give you some other words here. This is talking about being numbered, registered, recorded, listed, enrolled. They want to know, who do we have? Well, I'm known for what I am, so I may as well be that. You don't need to register me, and you don't need to number me. Don't worry about me. I'll exist somewhere, and it's fine if you don't know where I am. Yeah. I don't need to be on all your records, Caesar Augustus. Name has changed, but it's not far off. So we are, we are just fine without that. But they had those decrees back then, 
and then verse 2, if we can go to verse 2, it says, And this taxing or this registering, this numbering, this recording was first made when Serenius was governor of Syria. Actually, actually, when you look at the different translations, and the, I thank God I have access to a number of translations, number of languages, it's actually not talking about this was, you know, it's a little confusing when it says this was, this first happened, but this was the first census ever. This was the first census that was done. And I'll say something now, and for this one, no charge. <laughs> census and censoring. You might not think so, but look it up yourself. Have both have the original word estimating. Oh, okay, so we want to estimate. What did he just say? Should that be on here or should that not be? We want to estimate, except that it has become a little stronger word. But anyway, no charge for that. Verse 3 says, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. They had no choice. They were mandated. They were decreed to do what they were doing. All right. Everyone went to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth into Judea onto the city of David. When I was in Israel, literally, when I was in the country of Israel, very, very, I, I, wish, I wish you all had the opportunity. What The thing that I appreciated most, most of being in Israel was to think Jesus was here. Jesus walked here. Mind you, it feels interesting that when you read in the Bible that it took days and weeks to travel from here to there, and now we got in the bus, and it's 30 kilometers from Nazareth to to Jerusalem or whatever it was so it's not a long distance but it's beautiful beautiful to see where he was so anyway uh, Joseph also went up from Galilee out of the city of Nazareth and went into Judea and unto the city of David which is called Bethlehem because he was of the house and lineage of David now you see what's going on is where do you all belong which tribe are you from where are you from this is where you need to go all right and uh, verse 5, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was, verse 6, and so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she shall, and uh, here I'm reading again, Matthew verse, 1 verse 21, just in conjunction with this. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Verse 7, Luke 2 verse 7. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. Can I tell you what that means? That means people aren't expecting him. People aren't expecting him. Everybody is more important than the one capital letters. Everyone is more important. The inn is full. We have no room. Folks, it's no different in 2021. The inn is full. There's no, there's no room for Jesus. There's no room for God. Anything and everything. Listen, that's church is not essential, right? No, church is essential. I've said it from day one on, and I'm telling you, go proclaim it in the whole world. Church is essential. And whether there was room or not, it didn't hinder God's plan. It didn't hinder God's plan. He is going to bring salvation down to this earth in a miraculous, miraculous way. Verse 8. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. Verse 9. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid because it had never happened before. They didn't know what is going on. So they are in the fields. Oh, I wish we would not just in this Christmas spirit read over Luke chapter 2 and just, okay, if we can get through this chapter, then we can get through that uh, uh, heathen Christmas, sorry, through that uh, tree, then we can get through that tree, and then we can get through those heathen, get, sorry, get to those gifts, and then we can have all those things, and then we can celebrate the birth of Jesus. I'll tell you one thing. I'll tell you one thing. That's the furthest away in most people's mind is what exactly did he say? I don't know how easy that would be bring Matthew 121 back up. But I wish that everybody, and I wish as you walked into Walmart, I wish the verse was shown there. This is why this happened. 
This is what it was. He will save his people from their sins. Let the manager of Walmart say, Folks, we are glad you're at the store. We want to let you know that she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Let Walmart managers say, If anyone is not saved in this room this morning, Well, Pastor, you have to understand, it's not a church. Maybe they should be. Maybe they should be. And maybe eventually they will be. When we can't be in here, maybe we should have church at Walmart. Whatever is left open in the end, maybe that's where we'll have church. And I'll tell you one thing. By that time, the church, the Walmart manager might be ready to get saved. Because not all managers that are there are with the narrative. Not all managers. Listen, don't be so judgmental thinking that everybody, all right, they are... They're, they're written off. There's a lot of people in there. There's a lot of people out there living in desperate fear, holding onto their job with both hands. Anyway, we need to, sorry, we got off here a little bit. So the shepherds were keeping their flock by night. Verse 9. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them. Am I reading verse? Okay, verse 9. And they were sore afraid. Verse 10. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. <laughs> Not just the Jews. Thank God, right? Not just the Jews, but this will be to all people. This will be global. I'll tell you something. What is happening right now is to all people. This great awakening that we are in, have embarked upon, have embarked upon, is for all people globally. There's nowhere you can flee right now to get away from this great awakening. Because God has begun, the, uh, yes, I'll say it, the great reset. I was cross-examined this week. They asked me this question. Pastor, would you confirm that in one of your messages of the past months, that you made reference to this virus and that you said it is a conspiracy theory and that you said, this is what, he, what I was asked, and you said that Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates and Prince Charles are part of this conspiracy theory. I answered and said, I would definitely, need, definitely not limit it to those three because there's more involved. <laughs> And I said, as far as the conspiracy theory is concerned, I have none left. They have used all of them. <laughs> all right. He said, we're going to the next question. <laughs> brethren, brethren, long before Mr. Schwab, long before he thought of the word great reset, God owns the term. It is God's registered term. God does a reset in this time. He says, I will restore. I will restore. He says, and brother, that's beautiful, beautiful. He says, I will give you pastors as at the beginning. I will give you judges as at the beginning. Well, pastor, where is it? Be a little patient. Come on. It's happening. I always see the glass is half full, not half empty. So we see God has begun. Don't get discouraged. It takes a little bit before we can fly away from here. We'll have to work a little bit, and I'll do my part by God's grace. So God is restoring. God is resetting the thing, whether, Schwab likes, sorry, whether Mr. Schwab likes it or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And there was a bunch of questions in that cross-examination. My answer was, yes, sir. <laughs> sir, would you confirm that at one time you called the burning man up there? I said, I absolutely did. 
sir, would you confirm that at least 50 of them came up? I said, I wouldn't doubt it. Oh, I so much wish and hope for boldness in Jesus' name. I so much hope for stopping all these noodleback people and standing up and preach like a preacher and stand up like a preacher and preach the Bible like a preacher and call it what it is. And if it says Jesus was born to save them from their sin, then what else am I going to say? So, pastor, so you believe this? You be, it's besides the point what I believe. I'm just telling you what it says. And if I'm too noodle back to tell you what it says, then get out of here. And then let somebody, then let somebody come up that has the word of God. Then let somebody come up that has the word and let them say it. One hundred percent. Do it. Give the Lord what is the Lord's. Well, Caesar says this. Okay, we've done that for 30 years. Now let's give the Lord what's the Lord's. All right. Lost my place. No surprise. Okay, where are we, brother? Verse 11. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That was his whole purpose, folks. That was his whole purpose. A Savior, a Savior, a Savior. Can I remind, my, remind you, and this is a little direct. How much can you take? I'll just, I'll just tell you this. President Donald Trump is not the Savior of the world. He's not. He can't, he can't do it. He can't do it. It takes a savior. His name is Jesus. I don't need to mention our prime minister. He doesn't even claim to be anything like that. So, Verse 12. Let's go on verse 12. And this shall be a sign unto you. I find it amazing. Sister Mach, I find it amazing the description that is given. And this shall be a sign unto you. So here's the shepherds in the field. And the angels are there and calming the shepherds down. You know, sometimes we might be a little afraid at first. But thank God for the angels that sing goodwill unto man. I think I'm jumping ahead a little bit. Somewhere it's in here. All right. So he says, this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace, good will toward man. Now if anything is the opposite of what we have been experiencing, that's this. Good will towards man. Good will towards man. I don't know what would be the opposite, but something like coercion. I'm just saying good will and earth on earth peace. On earth peace. I don't, I don't care how somebody looks at this verse, but this calms you down. And glory to God in the highest and on earth peace. Good will toward man. Or in other words, whatever is good for man, that's what we come for. Now we want to set things in order. Brethren, really that's what we've been preaching the last 20 months, maybe in just in so many words, is peace on earth. Good will towards man. And really, and really, it really doesn't matter. If you're sitting in this room this morning or you're watching live, it doesn't matter how deep you have gone in life. This Jesus, his blood that he shed reaches deeper. It goes underneath. It reaches deeper, deeper. But pastor, you don't understand how deep I've gone. I understand. But no matter how deep you have gone, no matter how guilty you are, it says what is, what is red as crimson shall be white as snow. And when it snows out there, Oh, I'll just throw this in, no charge. It's more important for many, many people. It's more important that December 25th is white as snow than it is that their hearts would be white as snow. And that's why we need to shout it out and let them know, if you like snow, then get your heart white as snow. Let it be washed clean because he, that's why he came for that very purpose. 
And it came to pass, verse 15, and it came to pass as the angels were gone away from them into heaven, the shepherds said one to another, let us now go even unto Bethlehem and see this thing which is come to pass, which the Lord hath made known unto us. Verse 16, and they came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. Verse 18, and all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told them by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Verse 20, and the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, and it was told unto them. So now I have no excuse but to give you the whole title. You thought I forgot. I want to give you a bit of a controversial title. Christ's birth versus Christmas. Christ, Christ's birth versus Christmas. So now I'm a little bit on thin ice here. Now I'm a little bit in, in, the, in the territory that you might have never heard before. No worries. No worries. I thought somebody was walking out already, but it's one of the ushers. <laughs> but that was, that was too fast. I haven't even started yet. So I want to I let you know this morning, we are not at all not at all troubled that you are here if you believe in what they call Christmas. I just want to tell you, we don't. Because there's two items, or there's two reasons, two main reasons why. One is when we see the commercialization of it. And second, when we see the heathen roots or the heathen, the heathen uh, elements in it. You can't help but to say something doesn't match. Something doesn't match. So, I was going to, I was going to, but it became too large of a subject. So, I'm not going to do a, uh, what's the, what are those words? A thorough, what's another word for thorough? Dissertation. Come on, where's your vocabulary? So I'm not going to give you an encyclopedia version. I want you to do something. Everyone, everyone. I want you to go home, spend a week, do a little research for yourself. Do a little research. Where did this all happen? Where did this all start? The interesting thing is, the interesting thing is, nowhere in the Bible do you find the word Christmas. Nowhere in the Bible do you find that they were told to celebrate Christmas. Nowhere in the Bible do you find that they did it. Now, are you serious? So you don't believe in the birth of Jesus? I just preached it to you. I just told you how much we believe in it. But I won't share my preaching with Walmart. And this world has manipulated us. This world has duped us on those things. And since when, since when does Walmart play the song Joy to the World and Costco? I'll tell you why. They wouldn't do it for you unless you bring your wallet. They couldn't care less about the joy to the world except that they want the filthy money, the filthy lucre. And then, and then, the scripture came to my mind. Can you take a little more or is this about it? <laughs> All right. So what we want, what we want, and we, we have teachers, Bible teachers here sitting in our midst that are more qualified than I am when it comes to do an exhaustive, what do you call it, an encyclopedia uh, thing where they pull it apart and they show you what it is. That's coming very soon, so don't miss it. 
don't miss it. I'm estimating, but I'm estimating. I'm just thinking that it's probably not this coming Sunday, but the following. I wouldn't doubt if you hear an exhaustive thing on it. And then we'll hear what Constantine had to say about it. And then we'll hear what this he said and what, where this started. Why, if it wasn't in the Bible, when did it start? Where did it start? What happened with it? And when did, when did Prince Albert and Queen Victoria, how did they get involved? How did that happen? What did Germany have to do with it? How did it come to America? How did it come to be what it is today that all of a sudden we are so diverse or we are so divided in this North American continent? But when it comes to this state, all of a sudden we all bow down to the image. Sorry. All of a sudden we all, yes, all in the same spirit. I'm not. I love the birth of Jesus, but it is ours as the Christians. It doesn't belong to Walmart and Costco. I'll step down just a bit and then I'll come back. Walmart and Costco didn't get a dime from me during these holidays. Oh, so pastor, you don't believe that anybody deserves a gift? Absolutely. Absolutely do they deserve a gift. Let's just not mix it up with the sun that was, came down from heaven uh, to save our, our, us from sin and then cover it up with all these other things. You seem pretty shocked right now. You're okay, aren't you? All right, so we're doing okay. Okay, so then Jesus walks into the temple. And I want to hear Joel Osteen preach on that. Pre I'll give him the text. Mr. Osteen preached this coming Sunday on John 2.16. I just want to hear it. And Jesus said, Jesus said unto them that sold doves in the temple, Take these things hence. Watch. Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. So am I safe? Listen. Don't attack me after, after service about this. I, all I ask is study it. So oh, why is it that they made merchandise of that? I thought they were selling those doves and sheep and whatever they were selling for sacrifices. Isn't sacrifice good? No, I'll tell you what's better than sacrifice is obedience. So they were selling all these things. Jesus came in there. And did he ever speak so nicely, didn't he? He came into the temple and so gently as ever. I mean, he was a baby in the manger. He said, would you please all get out of the temple? What happened there? Ah, looked a little bit like some of these preachers that you've seen in the last while. People that are not afraid to stand up. And Jesus walked in there. He didn't do it once. He didn't just do it once. Did it one time at the beginning of his ministry and one time at the end of his ministry. And one time he got a little more aggressive than the other time. So let's leave that for another message. But Jesus walked in and he says, get out of there with these things here. Don't make merchandise. Don't make merchandise. Could I safely say this morning, look, don't make merchandise of Christ's birth. Don't make merchandise of it. Listen, they sell everything you could think of. They sell a manger, whatever size you want it. Whatever size of baby you want. Whatever you want. Listen, don't steal it from us. Because we are beyond happy to see how he came. How he was born at Bethlehem. And we will adore him. Adore him. And we will do it. How did that get up there? Oh, that's right. I have it here. Okay. So he said, take these things hence. Make not my father's house and house of merchandise. Maybe, maybe we could post that on the site in Walmart. I'm just saying, I'm just a suggestion, not a mandate. Just a suggestion. Put it on your thing at Walmart so everybody sees it. Can I tell you something else? Listen, the same store that praises Halloween, the same store says Jesus in the manger. Then I already know it's of the devil sorry and not sorry because there's an agenda behind it and you know what if I had preached two years ago and said there's an agenda people say what are you talking about like we trust everybody from the top to the bottom now everybody knows the word agenda it's a new word in our in our vocabulary there's an agenda behind it listen whatever the public will want that we will sell and if Walmart knew I'm sorry Walmart I'm a little bit on your trail this morning but if Walmart knew that it would help to sell Halloween stuff, they would gladly play joy to the world. 
whatever will get your wallet out, whatever you will do to leave your last money there. Let me tell you, folks, sometimes you might be shocked. All of a sudden, you'll get here on a Saturday evening sometimes, and I might do a lesson on finances. And I'll preach on the sin of overspending on credit card because it drags you down to hell. I am serious because people are overspending for, for Santa who has never existed. Santa doesn't exist. Don't ever tell your children that. No charge for that. So listen, don't spend and spend. If you want to spend, I never really say this. This morning I will. If you want to spend, go put the money in the offering box. And I'll make sure I don't get it. Because <laughs> I don't. Anyway, we'll leave that also. All right. So this is, this is what Jesus says. Make no merchandise of it. So we have, we have one more scripture. And then I'll let you go. And then we will hear some discussion. We'll see what you say to that. Because we'll be eating together. And if I see somebody at the table is not eating and just wanting that I know they're still digesting the message. All right, turn with me to Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 10. We looked at the commercialization of it. That's just briefly, and like I said, I won't build it out this morning, but that's coming. That study is coming, Lord willing. So Jeremiah 10, verse 2. Jeremiah 10, verse 2. Let's read three verses here. Do we have it up there? All right, here we go. So thus saith the Lord, learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed, at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Pastor, I don't see anything but Christmas in there. Well, just be patient. The next verse. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. Next verse. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. Pastor, where is that written? Right there. Jeremiah 10. Well, that's in the Old Testament. Well, we take the Old and the New. Jesus constantly said, is it not written? Have you not read? Have you not read? What was he talking about? The New Testament wasn't in existence yet. He said, have you not read? Have you not read? Have you not read? So you're saying, Pastor, I have never worshipped that tree. Maybe not you, just the people around you. It's a dead thing brought into the house. And if this morning, if you had a Christmas tree, if you have one in your house, I'll give you a hug after service and tell you I love you. Not, not a problem, but you need to consider that because we have been duped. We have been manipulated. We have been misled because it was merchandise. It was merchandise. It was merchandise. And it's extremely tough. It's extremely tough for your little ones to excite them so much about this. So much with the gold and the silver. So much with that and the gifts. And then tell them, look, Jesus came down to this earth. Don't do it. Don't do it. If you like pine trees, go adore them when they are, as they are growing. Adore them and measure them and stand beside them. Take a selfie. I don't believe in selfies very much, but to do whatever you need to do. But don't mix that in with this because they have duped you with it. Everything is about money. Even, oh, how do I say this? Even the J-A-B-S. It's all about money, even the J-A-B-S. It's nothing but the money. You and I are not falling for this. Brother Sherlock, we're not falling for this. We're not falling for this. We're saying, look, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. So if every preacher in North America preached what I preached this morning, Walmart stock would go down a bit. And in due time, it will anyway, because God will see to it. God, they're not the Savior of this world. They're not there for the people. Listen, when you hear the term, this is for your own good. This is for the people. Just look, look at the devil's face behind it, because it's anything but that. So, Jesus said at the end of his message, 
he said, have you understood? So God help us that we would be a people that is awakened. So now go home and study. And I really mean it. If you disagree with me, what I said in the second part of this message, which was Christ's birth versus Christmas. If you disagree with me on the second part, we will gladly discuss it at length, whatever you need. Just do yourself a favor. Don't show your ignorance. Don't talk too fast too soon. Just do some research and find out where, so where did, so where did this stop? Where did, there's all kinds of information available. Cross-reference it and find out where history, look at history, find out. And if you find the word Christmas in the Bible, shout it in my face. Lord bless you.